Eh? Uh, good morning to you all. I am Roberto Conti for those who doesn't know me, who doesn't have, have ever never met me. Uh, uh, I apologize for the technical problem we had this morning on uh, the streaming uh, flow, um, but now I think that you can uh, hear and see me. Uh, this is the second uh, session of lectures uh, and about geomorphology, I think. And uh, I give you, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for your patience waiting for us. And uh, then I give the uh, line to Mr. Ruggeri, Ruggeri. For, the, Ruggeri for the first uh, lecture. Thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs> Presentation. Uh, good morning, everyone. I think we don't need microphones. Yes. Oh. My presentation concerned the uh, description. No, I think it's not uh, necessary. Okay. Hmm? The description of some caves which we detected in some uh, volcanic area of uh, Armenia. It is part of a more uh, general uh, study investigation, which we put in place with uh, uh, the Spherological National Society of Armenia and uh, my center. My center is the Iblean Center for Speo-Hydrogeological Research of Ragusa, Italy. This, um, uh, is part of uh, cash research and uh, was put in place undertaken during four campaign of uh, uh, research from starting from 66, 2016 to 2009. So uh, Armenia uh, is a small country uh, between uh, Europe and Asia and it bored Georgia to the north, uh, Turkey to the west, Azerbaijan to the east, and in the south, southwest, with the border with the, uh, Iran. This uh, is a, a country rich of historical sites and historical uh, religious place. You can see here uh, one of the most important monasteries in Armenia, which is embedded in a spectacular contest of the uh, mountain. You can see also to the left the icon symbol of Armenia is a cross, which is called the Chattar, and is carved in the stone. It's a very, very singular and particular icon of Armenia. This country is uh, uh, very hospital with, uh, with the strangers. In fact, we have a very good, good um, client there. But uh, notwithstanding, they have suffered a very, very tragedy during the last uh, century, in the first decade of the last century, the genocide of Armenia. Anyway, we... We can uh, visit if you want there, if you, someone wants uh, to enter in Armenia. And uh, you can see also very important monastery, like this, uh, the Kor Rap Monastery, with, which is near the cross of, uh, with the uh, border of Turkey, with the background of the uh, dormant volcano Mount Ararat, which is 5,137 meters high. From the physical and geological uh, point of view, Armenia is a mountainous country which is framed by high uh, marginal mountain. The, this island is part of the Transcaucasian uh, area in the south of uh, Caucasian region 
and uh, is uh, uh, characterized by very spectacular mountain. This mountain is uh, a very uh, deep and cut by spectacular amazing gorge and canyon. And mm -hmm. also uh, you can see all, <coughs> on uh, most of the walls of this canyon many, many entrance of cave. This cave are obviously cast cave, which are developed in the Devonian and uh, Cretaceous Eocene and conglomerate limestone. You can see also this uh, cast through your cast gorge. And uh, here we have a synthetic, synthetic geological map of the country. But it's possible to see also the main formation uh, linked to lava effusion. We have two uh, mainly lava formation. The uh, lower is the pyroclastic uh, formation of neogenic age. The uh, upper is uh, effusive basalt lava, which is in the uh, south part of the country, but also in the northeast part of the country. The yellow one that you can see in the pictures is pyroclastic from neogenic age. So, uh, concerning pyroclastic um, landscape, is uh, very important the rock settlement of North Zoresk. This is uh, in the southeast part of the, the country. And it looks like a Cappadocia scenery in Turkey with the fairy chimney, pinnacles, and spice. It's a very, very amazing scenery, this. But uh, as the Cappadocia is very known, and uh, most of the people know this uh, scenery, this is not very, very known by people, but it's the same, very, very interesting. You can see some uh, <coughs> pictures, some image of the pyroclastic uh, landscape, which was uh, eroded by, by wind and water, making these uh, spectacular uh, towers, fairy, fairy chimneys, and uh, so on. Concerning the other um, basalt uh, fluvial uh, effusion, we are in uh, the south and northeast part of, uh, of the country with Mount Ugtasar, about uh, 3,000 uh, level. And uh, also in this part of the country, we have very suggestive uh, short like this caldera, this uh, river flow of lava, and also uh, some prehistoric uh, site, like this uh, prehistoric observatory. Then the most important uh, situation is the petroglyphs on basalt rocks, all the more than 1,500 years ago. You see in basalt rock in this part. So uh, our um, campaign of research interested in this part of Armenia for expedition of 2061 and 2069, 59, sorry. The first uh, was in uh, 2070, where we found some volcanic cave in the Leban area, in the northeast of the country, near the border with Azerbaijan. Here we surveyed and explored some cast cave, but one of the cave was in the lava flow of quaternary age, Sanain cave. You see, this is one of the entrance uh, located <clears throat> on the walls of the, the Bed River Valley. 
the cave is uh, um, constituted by a um, uh, main gallery about 80 meters long with the first part uh, showing two small branches. In the middle part is divided by a gate. But it ends with a spectacular window overlooking the, the, the river valley below. You see. Uh, the, the cave is a small cave, but is uh, constituted by massive basalt lava in the upper and the ceiling with some void in, on the vault, maybe due to the, the gassing of bubble. Mm -hmm. But in the middle part and in the lower part of the gallery, there is seen this kind of uh, centimeter layers, very vacuolated. Uh, which embedded also some alluvial pebbles from maybe from the river. You see. So we hypothesized looking to yeah. this element, this which the, the cave have a first phase of emptying, a second phase of filling with the, this alluvial material. This, the presence of this alluvial material is um, in the cave is, uh, so the, yes, is in according with the, the Palio terrace you see on the left, on the right, there is a Palio terrace at the same, about at the same level of the, the cave. So maybe the, the cave came to light as the terrace was cut from the deepening of the valley. In this uh, situation, the alluvium of the, of the river came inside the, uh, the cave. In 2018, we performed an, uh, another expedition in the southeast part, Tizian Mad region, where uh, two caves uh, have been explored Spring Cave and Bridge Cave. Spring Cave is uh, about uh, 77 meters long, it, it is uh, sub parallel. To the, to the slope, to the wall. Inside the cave, uh, you can see also some collapsing block uh, from the vault, which fall from the vault, and a small, a small spring emerging from uh, fractures. Close to the spring cave, there is another cave, which we call bridge cave, because uh, one uh, structures due to the collapsing of the massive basalt. And also this cave is uh, extended sub parallel to the, to the walls, to the slope of the, of the valley. Many blocks collapse from the, from the vault and the, in the innermost part of the cave are small Reentrance with uh, alluvial uh, alluvial uh, tables also. We think that uh, uh, these two cave uh, is not a lava tube cave, but uh, came from the gassing of bubbles. Uh, the deepening of the valley um, eroded the one uh, part one part of the cave and fill with alluvium inside. For this reason, we, we can think that it is not uh, a remnant of a lava tube. In the same region, we moved to the Sam River Valley. In this valley, you can see in the in, uh, lower part, columns, basalt, you see, of quaternary period also. While in the upper part, there is some, uh, some volcanic cave. 
such mm-hmm. as Lam Cave at uh, 1,912 meters above sea level. This cave is uh, a small cave, 25 meters long, but inside in a singular situation was observed in the end part, which is close with the um, conical shaped cap. We stopped to the end, but there is a top shaped by conical shape. So the last research was performed in 2019 in the Goris area. Goris area is another area which is uh, interested by pyroclastic uh, neogenic uh, volcanic material. It's very interesting because uh, in the old town of Gors is uh, uh, is present are present many many caves. They are artificial caves, most of them you can see here. And in the last century, this cave was inhabited by by Goris people. You see. Some pictures of the Goris old town with the presence of uh, fragmentation from Stone Age to medieval time to the last decade of uh, last century. You see also here the pyroclastic uh, formation eroded with covered by many caves. Here, yeah, cave of, of course, artificial, which uh, was used by, for dwelling, both dwelling and as shelter for the animals. Most is artificial, but some of these are natural, like this in the picture, which was uh, eroded in, on the bottom of the river valley. And uh, conclusions as a part of a more general research project aimed at the study of the karst phenomena present in the rapid rapid of Armenia, 13 non karstic caves have also been documented and surveyed, of which four caves originated in the quaternary lavas, nine caves semi-artificial in the neogenic pyroclastic formation. Two caves in the quaternary lava, one located in the northeast, the other in the south of the country, show a typical morphology related to lava emptying processes, lava tubes. The other two, also in the quaternary lavas, located in the south, showed morphologies originating from the formation of gas bubbles within the magmatic mass. The caves surveyed in neogenic pyroclastic formation in the south of the country were mostly made by men, some by digging in its natural void and used since the Stone Age until the last decades of the last century. As highlighted in the suggestive old town of Goris, for the later contest of great and escape appeal and the cable archaeological and historical and tropic value, enhancement and conservation projects are planned. Thank you for your attention.
And uh, I, I apologize for the delay. Now we are about 30 minutes late, so we pass uh, directly to the uh, next uh, lecture. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Wu Kung Sik of Cave Research Institute in Korea. And uh, he, he has an important uh, background because he was in the Bureau of the Union International of Speleology since 1997. And he hosted important conferences in Indonesia and in New Zealand. And uh, he was also an adjunct secretary of the UES uh, from 2009 and 2013. And he was the past president of the UES since uh, from 2013-2017. His field of activity is uh, mostly Cheyu Island and he, today he presents a, a paper about Cheyu Island. So it's my pleasure to give the line to Kyung Sik Wu. Uh, thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yes. 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 We can. Yes, yes, it's very, very, very well. Uh, let me. And you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. I can see your screen. Uh, I think the I, I need an answer from the organizer. <laughs> can you? Can you see my, everybody can see my screen? I think the organizer is out of the room. <laughs> uh, I guess I can just start, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how many people are on the floor, you know, uh, uh, um, listening to my presentation. Uh, <coughs> Uh, in the room, but uh, I guess I can start. Yes, um, it's, it's start, start, the presentation is uh, online. It's online, okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, can, if you like, go for your exposition. Okay, um, uh, hello everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, give my pre presentation. I'm very sorry that I cannot be there. I, I, I even bought an airplane ticket last year to go there because I was uh, so eager to uh, visit the Mount Netna and the lava tubes there. But um, I'm going to talk uh, about the geoheritage assessment of volcanic caves on Jeju Island, Korea. And this is the content, these are the contents. I'm going to talk a little bit about geoheritage and the protection status of volcanic caves on Jeju Island, and the evaluation criteria, and evaluation result, and the summary. You all know that geology is uh, uh, deals with the history of the Earth, and uh, 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 we have uh, seven uh, four point six million billion year history of the Earth. So there are many many hidden stories of the Earth, and also. Uh, the geology also covers geomorphology and uh, dealing with the present landforms and landscape and ongoing processes. Also, geology covers the historical geology, which means the evolution of life forms. So there are many interesting, interesting geological elements. Uh, and we have to protect and conserve some of the geological element, which is called geoheritage. Geoheritage comprises the element of the Earth's geodiversity that are considered to have significant value for intrinsic, scientific, educational, cultural, aesthetic, and ecological reasons, and therefore deserving conservation for the benefit of future generations. So geoheritage site can be a large area, it can be a huge mountain range, 
or sometimes it can be a very small uh, area uh, such as this. This is a single uh, plane. We, uh, we can see a line. Uh, we call it, geologists call it uh, KT boundary. It's the boundary between Mesozoic and Cenozoic rocks. And along this line, we have a lot of geological evidence which are, are telling us the story about the meteorite impact and the uh, dinosaur extinction. So even though it's a small, very, very narrow site, sometimes those sites can be very significant. Of course, some caves, limestone caves, gypsum caves, or halite caves, and lava tube, uh, volcanic caves, are the important geological heritage site. So the background of my paper is there's some, uh, you know, there's some caves are significant geoheritage site, but very little studies have been carried out for the assessment of geoheritage values of volcanic caves, as well as all the natural caves. And also very little legal protection measures for cave conservation is present uh, in, in, in the world. So suitable evaluation criteria for protection uh, needs to be established. Let me tell you a little bit about the legal protection, uh, protection of natural caves in Korea. All the natural caves, as well as animals, plants, significant geological elements, fossils, minerals, rocks, and other geological features are protected by the Cultural Heritage Protection Act since 1983. And sometimes if they are hidden in the rocks or in the sediments, it can be treated and protected by the Act on Protection of and inspection of burial cultural heritage is something like archaeological remains, you know, hidden on, uh, in the subsurface. Those are potential monuments. So uh, in Korea, it's a pretty, pretty good uh, protection measure uh, uh, for conservation of caves. And this uh, Cultural Heritage Protection Act is the strongest protection measure among all the other laws for nature protection. So once the area is designated by the Cultural Heritage Pro Protection Act, uh, it's very well uh, protected because uh, it, even if it has a buffer zone, and if something, some, if there is an, any development pressure in the even in the buffer zone, they have to get permission. So the uh, uh, the caves with the highest scientific values are designated as a natural monument, and one lower level is provincial monument, and the, uh, 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 and the, the, the cultural property material in order. Uh, maybe some, most of you should know where the uh, Jeju Island is located, uh, is uh, in the far uh, east uh, Asian, uh, Asian part of the uh, eastern part of Asia, uh, and uh, here is the uh, Korean Peninsula, and it's about 100 kilometers south of Korean Peninsula. And uh, we have over 150 lava tube caves, volcanic caves uh, on Jeju Island. And many of you probably visited the, uh, the Jeju Island when I organized the uh, Volcanospeleology uh, uh, meeting in 2008, I think, I believe. And, but uh, there are over 150 caves, but, and there are 12 caves which, which are designated and protected as a national monument. And there is one cave as a, a protected as a provisional monument. But I think uh, uh, the, the more caves should be pro uh, evaluated and protected. The evaluation criteria, I think, for uh, volcanic caves are dimension, uh, which means total length, length of the main passage, length of the branches, and the uh, width and height of the passage and shape of the passage, sometimes you, you can see the labyrinth type, unest mosing uh, patterns, and sometimes you have uh, multi-level passages. And the uh, uh, distribution and the diversity and size and peculiar shape of uh, microtopographic features and lava spirit dams. And Jeju Island is very famous, the uh, uh, diverse secondary uh, cave minerals, uh, such as uh, opal or carb uh, uh, carbonates, and distribution and diversity of secondary minerals are very important. And uh, uh, if there are some uh, special sites, such as lakes and submerged passages, and a brackish water with the halocline, 
as well as hip segments. Uh, the, the, uh, then uh, it can be uh, also a good uh, 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 good element for uh, evaluation. We also need to uh, think about the geological integrity, presence of cave system, and conservation status, which I will explain in a minute. So the evaluation criteria should be uh, the criteria should be evaluated based on the representativeness, which means that good representatives can be recognized if some caves display one of the best examples for the criteria of uh, uh, mentioned above. Or the rarity, rarity means uh, implies very peculiar features which are very rare compared to most other volcanic uh, caves on Jeju Island. And integrity means two things. One is intactness, and the second is uh, geological integrity, wholeness. In intactness means how well preserved, you know, uh, the, the internal features and the spirit themes and over uh, dimensions, and those are the intactness. And the uh, geological uh, integrity means that because the lava to, uh, volcanic caves are uh, usually uh, present near the surface, you, I mean, the, the, uh, the roof tends to collapse down. So sometimes there are too many rock uh, falls in the, in the caves. So it's very difficult to see the or, original primary features. So, uh, but uh, it's very important to know the source of lava. So if we can see the whole cave system, even though it was it was broken down, it's very important. So uh, that means the geological integrity. So the cave dimension and complexity is one uh, very good criterion, and the topography features, uh, overall shape of the cave, and sometimes you can see some of the uh, uh, lava or some other uh, lava on the floor. And sometimes you can see lava falls. Sometimes you can see this kind of rolled up uh, structure. And also you can have a variety of lava spirit themes, which I, we think that uh, those are very important uh, 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 elements uh, for evaluation. And in, on Jeju Island, many caves, uh, volcanic caves on Jeju Island have carbonate spirit themes because there are carbonate dunes overlying the uh, volcanic caves and some so uh, we can see many uh, opaline silica uh, the cave corals made up of uh, opaline silica and in some caves there are uh, cave streams uh, sometimes permanent streams or ephemeral streams but sometimes on the right the photos on the right uh, you can see the stream which is connected to the seawater so you can there is actually the helicline the uh, boundary between the freshwater and the seawater uh, within the cave. Sometimes you can find some cave sediments, and sometimes cave sediments can tell us many, uh, many his, uh, stories about the uh, climate changes in the past. So in, uh, in one of the uh, uh, volcanic caves, Bilemo Cave uh, on the left, we have a thick sediments up to two meters. So uh, that's a very uh, that, that's a very significant in, in that respect. And the, uh, the evaluation category is uh, classified into A, B, C, and D. A is a natural monument. B is a provincial monument. C is it's not uh, eligible as a monument, but worth being conserved. And D is not valuable enough for conservation. So we classified. Uh, uh, all the volcanic caves into this four category. So the evaluation criteria for natural monument and provincial monument is a little bit subjective because it's very difficult uh, to uh, make uh, to make the uh, quantitative measurement. But uh, uh, we uh, use the same criteria as I mentioned above: cave dimension on, on the left, cave dimension, microtopography features, and lava spirit dams, and, and spatial size and passageway patterns and integrity the wholeness and intactness, and each criteria uh, should be uh, evaluated as A or B1 or B2. So any of the, the, the element, uh, the criteria was evalu is evaluated as A, then it's going to be A. But if there, are, uh, if, if there is a cave with uh, uh, two elements of B1, then we should discuss. So this is more or less very subjective, 
but we need to have a very good committee, committee members uh, to, for discussion of this, um, uh, the, the final, uh, putting into the final category. But the C and D, C is the caves which are worth uh, being uh, conserved, uh, but D is not, you know. So we need to make a very clear boundary. So we have to make a, a, a quantitative assessment. So uh, we had a very serious discussion about this, and we put the points for each criteria and made uh, uh, the, the, uh, the sum of the points. And the, uh, if the, 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 there is a, a, some caves are above certain point, it can be C or it can be D. So the uh, final, final result, this is not the whole data, but this is just the one part of the evaluation result of some uh, all the lava caves investigated in the north western part of the Jeju Island. So uh, like a B1 category, B2 category, class C and D, and we have uh, such and such a cave, and we have a description and uh, the remarks. And uh, you can see that class C and D, there are uh, the, the points, you know. So we uh, made an assess assessment uh, quantitatively and tried to make a distinction between C class and D class. The summary is volcanic caves in Jeju Island is, was evaluated or evaluated based on geoheritage values. The criteria for assessment based on geoheritage values are developed considering overall characteristic of the caves in Jeju Island. Four classes were classified based on eight individual criteria. This investigation was based on geoheritage values alone, and separate assessment will be required for biodiversity and ecosystem values, as well as other various archaeological values in the future. And this assessment, we will provide the basic information on legal protection of the uh, volcanic case by Korean government and effective management. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, you can email me to this email address. And tomorrow, I'm going to talk about the uh, a new I, I, uh, IUCN uh, uh, program, potential program, key geoheritage area related to this uh, uh, volcanic caves. And uh, thank you very much. So I guess you could hear me. Everybody could hear me. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we can. You can. Okay. It's thank you. Thank you very much. It's a very very interesting uh, your uh, presentation. Uh, bye bye. I would like to remind all people connected with us that they can send uh, their question on the chat of the product they use to follow this session. So if there are questions to Mr. Wu, uh, you are pleased to write on that chat and then we put a question to Mr. Wu. And uh, uh, Mr. Wu will be with us tomorrow with another job, another lecture, so we can at that place uh, transmit the, your questions. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Paul. Thank you. And uh, now I have to introduce Mrs. Tran Van Niebach. Mrs. Tran Van Niebach is, uh, um, is an officer at International Cooperation Division of Foreign Affairs Department of Dak Nong, Vietnam. Uh, Dak Nong was uh, uh, entered in, in the UNESCO uh, World Heritage for its uh, special features, uh, volcanic features, in uh, July 2020. So it is a new uh, entrance in this uh, world heritage. And uh, she worked hard to have this uh, recognizing from the UNESCO. So we are great, we are very grateful to Mrs. Van Tran. And then uh, uh, without uh, any other delay, I pass the line to Mrs. Van Tran.
Van? It's the line now. If you like, go your right. Yes, hello. But I think my presentations will be tomorrow's. And I will present about the proposal for the uh, ISV20 that we propose to be the host in 2020, uh, 2022. Can you hear me? We have a, 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 a lecture from you about the spatial distribution of characteristics of the non B land volcano lava tube system in that non UNESCO Global Geopark Vietnam. This is supposed to be here now. Si è disconnessa, lei fa la domanda, va bene. E allora passiamo al lavoro successivo. Buongiorno. Okay. Aspetta, vediamo se si riconnette un attimo. Così ci consente di rientrare nei tempi, però. Sì, recuperiamo i tempi. <ride> Speaking of this, c'è un braccio che dire qualcosa. Ok, se mi si collega, sì, digli che si che entra. Yes. Okay. Sì, ma non ce l'ho in linea. Sì, se, no, se, non, se non mi chiede l'accesso.
turn off before you eat. <laughs> Hi, Stefan. Hi, Kelsey. <laughs> hey, John. I haven't, I haven't met. I, I almost could not recognize you. <laughs> I've got too old. <laughs> Morning, Stefan. Good morning. Yes, what happened? I missed the first talks and I was waiting to be let in. I I don't know what's um I I, I was just watching it on YouTube, so I, I didn't have any speaking. Yeah, I, I was I, I logged in through YouTube but I couldn't I guess they didn't let me in. I haven't I haven't I, I almost couldn't recognize you. <laughs> I was like starting on YouTube. <laughs> I, I, I thought that you guys were uh, in, in I was waiting to be let in. <laughs> I, I, I was, um, oh, you are in I was just watching it on YouTube, so I didn't have any speech. Yeah, I, 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 I logged in through YouTube, but I couldn't put it. I just said it let me in. I haven't, I haven't worked. 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 I I thought you guys were. Well, at, at least I'm. I'm. I'm listening to your talk coming up, Sanju. Huh? I don't know. Somehow this uh, the microphone is repeating itself. Oh. So you guys could hear my presentation, or yes, yes, we could. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah, I think um, you know they've got a few uh, little technical problems in Catania, but also yesterday we experienced some problems. Um, mm. uh, Stefan dropped out at one stage, and I lost a link here. So um, mm. it's. Um, John, are you are you in Australia? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you went to Catania. You're the chair of the. <laughs> I would love to be in Catania, but um, we're in lockdown here. We're not even allowed out of our suburb. <laughs> it's too Catania. bad because you know I bought a plane ticket last year. You know, uh, and the, the me and Dion, you know, we bought a plane ticket six months in advance. We would definitely uh, decide to go. Because I really wanted to see the Mount Netra, but you know, I uh, just said, uh, I mean, I, I was very surprised that they did not delay this meeting. You know, I was hoping that they delay this meeting by one more year, then I could go. You know, <laughs> yeah, no, I think, um, you know, understandably, um, these guys have been working towards this for three years, so if it didn't happen, if it didn't mm. happen this year, they were just going to cancel, and I think that's a fair enough attitude anyway we really can talk across across three continents right now that's good cool. so how many people are, are, are actually went to catania um about 25 have registered okay um, i didn't even see another, the register did, and do you another, have to register john sorry do you I, have to I've, register I, I i've seen the spreadsheet yeah Oh. And um, there's um, about another, I think it's about a total of 25, uh, 45, 45 people in total. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do the Sunju Hot Hello Zagres. Sunju. Sunju. Hello, Christian. Hello, hello. Hello, Christian. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> you guys at home? I, are you, I thought that Stefan went to Catania. No, no, no. 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 We, we, also, we, we also canceled. <laughs> Maybe it's time to bring my wife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope oh, that no. will work next time. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Just watch. Hi, hi. Say hi. Hello, hello. 
Nice to see you. Hold on. I'm going to take a, uh, a group photo here. <laughs> I can't see you. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao. ciao. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Giuseppe, if you didn't have grey hair yesterday. Yeah. I'm very tired, uh, Stefan. I don't. I... You, you gave your talks on you this morning? Back on this? Yes. Okay. I, I, I was waiting to be let in. That's all I can say. There was no movement. And finally, Giuseppe gave me a new link. Did, did he pass out new links for today? The old one apparently just ended in nowhere. Oh, well. I'm sorry. It was really my fault. I was looking. Se lo vuole, lo so. Mi rende il Se cercare il computer vaso? La presentazione a Roberto Conti, facciamo fare la presentazione a Roberto Conti e poi iniziamo. Sì, sta arrivando, è andato a cercare qualcuno, non so. Ma se non lo sento così. Io lo sento meno. E qua lo sento io. Vuoi presentare tu la professoressa? Eh, io no. Vabbè, ci vediamo. Ditelo tu che la conosci meglio io. La parte complementare è Umberto. Bravo. Good morning. Now the uh, professor Emilia Poli Marchese speak about the life on the cave and your uh, experience of the volcanic cave exploration. Every year, thank you very much, Professor Thank you. Uh, this is uh, this state in a volcanic caves. Yes. Okay. 
Allora io volevo chiedere, eh, c'è il microfono perché c'è la voce molto bassa. È sufficiente così, vero? Penso sì. Mm. Ecco, va bene così. Ma cerchiamo di andare avanti. <ride> eh, 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 I have uh, uh, two papers about the volcanic caves on Mount Etna and uh, these two papers um, uh, are about to the um, caves, the origin of caves and the description of caves. And um, um, to take a degree, I disputed not only the dissertation, but also uh, three other short dissertation about different subjects. Um, one short dissertation was in vulcanology, and uh, our professor in university was um, the professor Alfred Redman. Mm -hmm. And uh, I discussed this short dissertation with professor uh, Redman. Mm -hmm. uh, the title was Genesis and the morphology of the volcanic caves on Mount Etna. After Professor Rittman told me that I would publish this dissertation. And this is um, the, these are the two um, papers about the genesis and the morphology of Etna territory. <clears throat> In these papers, I explained the genesis of the caves on Mount Etna uh, is due to the particular form of eruptive activity of the volcano and the nature of the magma. Um, and some caves generally remain unknown because they were formed in the interior of lava flows. And I propose the take classification of some linear caves by their origins. And um, I described the different caves which I personally explored and studied including them in the general classification. I indicated on a map the caves I studied, and this is the map where I indicated the caves I visited. I distinguished caves in empty forms, caves existing after the expansion of magmatic gases, caves existing after the flow of the lava, and the caves existing after flowing in the water. And from some of these um, cavities I studied, 
hai dibete section of the caps and this is the cavity of Monte Carcarazzi. This is the cave of the Modagnola. And this is the cave of the Grotta degli Archi. And this is the Grotta Santa Barbara. Uh, this cave was utilized for uh, habit uh, in summertime. And this is the Grotta di Pitagora, from Pitagora. Uh, because the, mm, uh, this is uh, as uh, 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 Pitagora uh, triangle. And this is the mm, uh, cave into the Monte Silvestre Cones. And uh, I gave it also a list of the caves on Etna uh, in different side of Etna. But uh, this is from sub side, east side, uh, and uh, oldest side, and the north side. And uh, so um, I indicate the different caves on different side. Um, I think uh, this is uh, what I uh, the studies I uh, make about the case from geological point of view. <laughs> and uh, now I have to speak about the life, the plant life. <laughs> is uh, my particular uh, interest. Loro qua non c'è una macchina, ma è più che um, in the caves, the plant life involves biological and also ecological processes. Uh, the plant life adapts organic caves to extreme ecological conditions. And uh, the plants live in conditions that sometimes are the limit of condition in which they can live. <coughs> uh, the caves, therefore, are an extreme environment for plant life. Um, main factors influencing plant life and caves are age and morphology on the volcanic substrate, climate and the particular variety in the cavity the plants uh, need light and uh, some biotic factors as plant dispersal, plant establishment and plant development. Um, the plant life in caves um, uh, influence the factors which influence the plant life in caves are linked to the plant themselves and to external factors. And the uh, unique factors are principally dispersal, establishment, 
establishment, development. The volcanic substrate are ecologically different according to the surface morphology and the degree of the breakdown. These factors condition each other. The level surface morphology in case is unevene. The river has many outers pointed out to the leaves, a different deep of soil areas and different types of plant life. Uh, the different species can live in the caves up to the flight value of brightness, partially changing their morphology. And uh, some plants um, give a, a, a major surface um, in the light. Mm -hmm. So they can adjust as much as possible to the increase of the quantity of light. The light gives restrictions on the range of species which can colonize. Um, the plant life in the caves is represented by few species. By the species which can go as far as the light allows them to flourish. Uh, the plants in the case change its morphology and adjust the morphological condition and in particular to the gradual degrees in light. <coughs> the plants in the caves adjust to the gradual degrees in light and particularly. Um, um, the vascular plants as the phanerogams flower until the light is 1.18 and they can grow until 1.000. The light is 1 to 1 of light. Ferns um, give spores until 1.300 of light and can grow until one uh, seven under of light. Mosses uh, um, can give it, can grow until one thousand of light. Lichens one to under of light, and they are one to two thousand of light. This is the limit of the green plants. The fungi can live in utter darkness. And this is um, this distribution of the plants um, depend also on the evolution of the plants. Uh, the plants um, which are more uh, evaluated, uh, need um, the light, uh, a, a great quantity of light. Mm -hmm. um, until the biotic factors, we have dispersal. <clears throat> the species of the caves usually come from nearby spores, fluids, seeds are transported by specific agents, wind, rain, animals, men, according to their characteristics. Dispersal depends on the action of these agents in each volcanic area. Establishing and development, germination and establishment depend on various genetic factors of the plants, and from the properties of the organisms and also by homoecological condition. The same factors moreover condition the development of the new habitat. The plant species in the case um, have a large quantity shows marked preferences for the habitat of the case. There are the sun mosses, which we can call cryptophile species, 
This is sick and losses which leave very good in the case. We can call the trogonomy only some species of microscopic fungi which are parasitic of insects which are attached to the environment of the caves. This is so. The animals uh, can, uh, can be uh, trogonomy, but the, the plants is difficult to call trogonomy. Within the gaps, very rare or almost extinct species, as some moss and fens, can have refuge. The cave environment is tending to keep enough in the thermic conditions and there's some constant moisture which marks it out. This environment can constitute oceanic microclimates. So it to present the precious vegetation relics, somewhere is decimated by the climate change. This is so the cave can uh, uh, give a refuge for some plants. And uh, um, in the cave there is a climate, a particular microclimate. The vegetal world of the cave is still not well known. And it is possible that the other interesting phenomena are discovered in the underground limit of the vegetal life. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ci sono anche altri operatori, no? Sì, esatto. Allora, c'è il buon Gerri. E quindi con il posto. Io le do questo. Gerri è buono vero, sì. Tu sei. Ma lei dopo la foto è difficile. Lo so, non è semplice. Se lo Gerri può passare. Passa. Ecco. Gerri. Non ho detto che mi ha capito il posto sulle operatori. Uno dei relitti degli spagnoli in Sicilia. Sì, la, è uno dei relitti. Non mi sa che sia. La settimana come docente, io non ho posso onorarmi di aver avuto una professoressa Stavoni. Ma penso che tutta la nostra generazione ha avuto questo. No, fortunatamente. Fortunato? No. Eh? No. Attenzione, che non è che ti ammazzi la persona. Allora, il Gianrico Vasquez. Gianrico, togli la presenza. No, non lo so. 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 Non Good morning to everyone. I'm Gianrico Vasquez, a mycologist from the University of Catania and a professor of uh, natural science at school. The title of my presentation is Microspeleologic Finds of Mushrooms, Basilio Michetes in particular, on Mount Etna's Volcanic Caves, together with uh, Lisa Musumashi and uh, Carmelo Pupolo. 
we already know that uh, all the organisms who live inside caves need particular adaptation for the hypogeum environment. And uh, in this uh, organism, we also can't forgive about uh, mushrooms and fungi. They grow, they grow almost everywhere, in glacial uh, lands, on the sand dunes of the desert. And of course, uh, even inside the hypogeum world, in the caves, we can uh, hardly find some mushrooms and fungi. Uh, inside the caves, they grow on the walls, on the roofs, and uh, even on the, on the floors of the cave. In this picture, um, we can observe uh, Michoconti Cave. It's a very beautiful volcanic cave, very close to Catania City. And uh, looking at this picture, um, we almost have uh, some very hard time to find life organisms. But then uh, you can teach me, and if we look uh, very closely, we can find some supplies. As in fact, if we give a look on the roof of this cave, we find a mushrooms that is growing up down from the roof of the cave. And taking a close picture, we can observe that it's a bolitus, it's a, a spongy mushrooms under the cup, we can easily see the, the sponge, the tubes of the mushroom. In fact, uh, caves fungi, we, can, we have to say that they are not uh, adapted to caves. They are the same mushrooms that they grow on the topsoil, the normal fungi, but uh, uh, they just choose to have a different habitat, the cave environment habitat. Although uh, there are always difficult things for them to survive. As Professor Paul is saying before, uh, it's an extreme environment, the cave, for plants, and in some way even for mushrooms. In fact, uh, the hardest thing for the fungi is to find food. Uh, is there's not enough food for them to, to survive. But sometimes they can find some uh, research to grow and to spend their whole life inside the cave. In fact, if you give a look up uh, to the characteristic of the environment, uh, we know that uh, light absence, high humidity, constant temperature, and food deficiency for organisms. But uh, at least the first three things of these uh, characteristics are very good for mushrooms lifestyle because mushrooms are, uh, 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 are uh, um, organisms that don't need light at all. They don't need sun right, for to survive. They are heterotrophic organisms and, and they love high humidity. That's the reason why all the agumidae is a good thing for them to, to live inside the caves. And even the coastal temperature is a good thing. The only problem is the food deficiency. But even if they are very rare and it's hard to find them inside the caves, they have a very important role, ecological role inside the caves. In fact, they are at the base of the pyramidal, pyramidal trophic chain. Uh, bacteria and fungi are the, the trivorous organisms that uh, uh, are very essential even for carnivores to survive inside the caves. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to uh, protect them in the cave because they have a very important role. It is the same role that they have on the topsoil. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that we divide the mushrooms in the three different life forms parasitic, symbiotic, and saprotrophic mushrooms. And all three forms are very, very important. Just to remind that the saprophytes mushrooms are the mushrooms that grow on plant, and especially in the cave on animals, uh, remains, rest. The parasitic mushrooms are the mushrooms that grow on the live organisms, live monoorganisms as animals and plants. And symbiotic mushrooms are the mushrooms that grow together with the root of the plants. All the three categories are very important and essential for the surviving of the other uh, life forms. And all the three categories are found inside the volcanic caves. 
Uh, let's go to our study. Our study has the purpose to create a framework, a systematic framework of all the fungal species that were found inside volcanic caves of Mount Etna. It offers a mapping, a detailed mapping of every single finding in the geographic and environmental context of the volcano Etna. Uh, I'll talk uh, um, already in 2001, there was uh, a collection, a very important found of some mushrooms inside volcanic uh, caves of Mount Etna. In 2001, uh, we found first uh, a collection of some bolitos. Uh, it is uh, also the first record of Italy of mushroom caves. From that time, I was always interested about mushroom caves, but I'm not a speleologist, and uh, so I had a hard time to go often in the caves. But fortunately, I have good friends that uh, every time they find some mushrooms, they take pictures or collect the sample, and, uh, and we together studied all our collection. Metals and materials. Um, Elisa and Mel and other friends went to collect uh, the mushrooms in different caves. And it's not so easy because it's very rare to find uh, very good sporophorous of mushrooms in the caves. And then we studied the uh, mushrooms together with the laboratory of uh, Associazione Micologica Bresadola of Catania with microscope and uh, chemical re 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 reagents. Uh, most of the samples were collected in an unfavorable season in June, but that's no matter at all because, uh, as we already said, temperature and humidity are very constant in the case. And that's the reason why we can collect uh, actually mushrooms all year round in the case of Vietnam. We collect the samples. We uh, at first we put them in a plastic jerk inside the refrigerator because we needed some time to uh, study. Then uh, we use the samples for microscopic studies, and after all, we dried all the samples to keep to keep them for uh, ulter for ulterior studies that we have uh, we have to do and we uh, try to do in the very early future. Uh, we dry the mushrooms at 45 degrees for 48 hours. Uh, the most important investigation of our collection for sure was the microscopic investigation. That's because uh, most of the samples were old, were very diff difficult to recognize the species uh, by morphologic uh, way. Uh, that's the reason why we use the microscope always, often. Uh, to try to find basidi, cistidi, and for especially spores of mushrooms. In fact, even if the uh, sample is very old and dry, uh, it keeps uh, very well the microscopic uh, characteristic. And the, 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 the determination of most of the species was made by microscopic characters. And uh, we uh, try, we hope to do very early even uh, some molecular investigation to find uh, some specificity of particular DNA sequence uh, that need uh, to be in a very early future, especially for some collection. Let's go to the chinsus that we have made in all Mount Etna. Of course, we try to look up uh, uh, collection from every single altitudinal zones of Mount Etna, from the sea to the very top. That's because uh, uh, on the different, different zones, we found different kind of species, according to the, the change of temperature and the humidity. But also because uh, the uh, presence of mushrooms in the cave is connected to the presence of the woods outside of the cave, especially for symbiotic species. So it's very important uh, to uh, have a very important idea of the woods of the tree plants that grow on the top of the caves. Uh, that's the reason why we concentrated our work uh, studying at first the vegetational map of Mount Etna. 
because we try to look up on the caves, uh, the, the very old caves that uh, exist under the woods. And uh, all different caves that Mel and Elisa uh, went through, uh, they found mushrooms in 13 different caves of Mount Etna in every single side of the volcano. From the very bottom in Macolatella in Michoacorti, very close to Catania City, to the very um, to the top, or close to the top of Mount Etna, and uh, to 2,000 meters, uh, close to, to 2,000 meters, Grotta dei Ladroni o della Neve. Uh, as we see this map, we can also understand as the vegetation uh, change from a different cave to the other one. In fact, if we find oak wood on the bottom, then we find chestnut trees and conifer woods on the middle uh, level until we find uh, even birch trees on a very high part of the mountain. Results, we found different species, about 15 different species in uh, 13 different caves of Mount Etna, uh, appertaining to very different family of mushrooms that we are going to see. In all these species, uh, one was very interesting, Melanogaster ambitus. Why this one is so different from the other species? Because Melanogaster ambitus was found in three different caves of Mount Etna, but also because it's a hypogeus mushrooms. Actually, to find Melanogaster ambitus, we need uh, a dog. Uh, uh, usually on the, our collection because it's a mushroom that grows under the land, underneath, uh, under the uh, cover land. Uh, so we were very surprised to find this hypogeum mushroom. It's very similar to a truffle, for instance, but uh, it grows on the roof of the wall. So it's like if we want to find some truffles or hypogeus mushrooms, we don't need any more the dogs if we go to look for them inside a cave. <laughs> but it's not a truffle, unfortunately. It's hypogeal mushrooms. It looks also very ugly in some way, but the spores are very beautiful and unique. Uh, and the spores investigation helped us to describe Melanogaster ambiguous. Other family of mushrooms that we uh, found, uh, Sclerodermatase with genus Scleroderm in three different caves. Xeropus and Bolidus, Bolidus mushrooms of Boletaceae family, Micena of Micenaceae, Imenopellis of Fisalacriaceae, Entoloma of Entolomataceae, different Colibia species. And in this way, we, mm, we were not able to find, uh, to describe the species, but uh, we arrived to the genus, genus Colibia. And also Colibiopsis, uh, this little mushroom Colibiopsis is called Gymnopus peronatus, and as we see in the picture, was found on the very early of the cave, on the entrance of the cave. Instead, the genus Lacaria was described just by Spores investigation. And also, uh, if we give a look to the uh, ecological role, we found 10 different saprotrophic species, uh, scleroderma, colibia, some that were growing on the uh, little piece of wood that were inside the cave. So uh, they are not uh, typical of caves, but they were in the cave because somebody throw or carry on this wood inside the cave or a, a corn or pine tree. Uh, three very important mycological species pertaining to Xeropomus family and uh, Entoloma family. Why these uh, three species are so important? Because uh, the mycelium, the hyphae of these mushrooms were uh, strongly connected of, to the roots of the trees that were growing on the top soil. Let's give a look uh, uh, finally to the adaptments of Kevis fungi. Just four important adaptments: the pigmentation of sporophorus, gravitropism is very uh, unusual and important, long floating body, a slow biological cycle. If we give a look of the same mushroom, Xeropomus, that was found in the cave, and the same mushroom appertaining to the same species outside the cave, they look a little bit different. 
just give a look of the stalk. The stalk is very uh, smoothy and long, respect to the one that grows uh, outside the cave. Uh, even the colors were totally different. Sometimes the, the pigmentation was totally, was totally in every single part of the fruiting body. But for sure, the most important showed adaptation is the gravity response. Why? Because mushrooms that were, that were growing in the cave, they assume a very interesting form. They were growing up, down, up, down from the roof, and then they tried to move their path as like they were going to look for the light. But we know, we know that the light is no matter for mushrooms. So why they are assuming this form? The, peculi the peculiarity of this form is because they grow it down, instinctively try to find the erect position because the erect position is the right position according to the gravitoprism uh, uh, rules to uh, defend their spores. Mm -hmm. Because if we look at bolitos, the spores of the mushroom is under the cup under the cup. So the mushroom knows that he, it has to go up to defend their spores, mm -hmm. as, uh, uh, they, as it actually do uh, on the top soil outside the cave. And that's very interesting because mushrooms, even if it doesn't recognize the light, recognize the uh, gravity force. That's the reason why mushrooms are studied even from NASA because there is a part of the floating body that can change its move uh, just going on the opposite side of the gravity force. Mm -hmm. Before to thank uh, uh, our friends, uh, the bibliography we used wasn't enough for sure, because there are not many studies about mushroom growing in the caves, but uh, I really hope uh, that our study can keep going and uh, have some results uh, even for uh, some other different caves. I have to thank uh, mm -hmm. Carmelo Bucalo and uh, Elisa Musumeci for sure, even Agatino Reitano, they give us uh, different pictures and some other friends that help us uh, to our research. Thank you. And uh, now we, we continue with the uh, uh, presentation of Leonardo Ancillotto, that is a researcher uh, and is a professor mm. pre, uh, about uh, the Department of Agraria in the University Federico II in Naples. And his uh, field is uh, ecology and uh, the conservation of uh, birds. And the, from, he studied in Italy since 2010, and uh, since 2015, he is a national coordinator of the Italian group of research on chirotteri. 
and uh, an important person to refer if you find uh, some bad in the game. <laughs> he, he, unfortunately, he, he can't come in Catania because he uh, a problem of an health problem, but he sent us uh, his presentation. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, see the video of the presentation of Leonardo Ancillato. Thank you very much. I'm going to present this talk about shedding light on long yielded paths from the genus Precocious from Sicily, uh, telling, talking, talking about how complex is the scenario regarding this species in, um, in Sicily. As a first step, I would like to spend a few words on what's a cryptic species in zoology. In case you may wonder, in zoology, um, cryptic species are pairs or groups of species that look very similar to each other to the point that they cannot be uh, easily distinguished or distinguished at all from a morphological point of view because their phenotype is extremely overlapping uh, to, the, to the other species to, in, within the complex. These groups of species are called the complexes and besides, they look very similar to each other uh, within the same complex, of course. They may strongly, they represent consistent and distinct biological entities that thus differ among each other for their ecological traits, biological traits, and more importantly, conservation status, which makes uh, even harder to detect uh, their presence and of course manage or conserve them on the long term. Today, the advances in the use of molecular tools for species identification allow us to uh, use techniques that um, permit to identify species even when they uh, overlap in their phenotypes. So even when they look very similar to each other, we can now sample uh, tissues or from, from living individuals with non-invasive methods or from in dead individuals or even from the environment. We can then extract DNA from their cells and use barcoding techniques. That is, we sequence the specific portions of, um, of their DNA and compare them to libraries built on uh, identified individuals, individuals identified to species. So we first build libraries. There are, there, are, there are now many different ones available online. For the most famous one is probably GeneBank, but there are others. And compare the sequence of our unknown individual or an unknown sample and can as, uh, assess whether this belongs to one or two, or the same first one, uh, second, uh, or whatever species we have in our library. This allows us to distinguish uh, between cryptic species, of course. Among vertebrates, bats represent a very uh, true uh, challenge in, in terms of taxonomic identification because there is a huge number of cryptic complexes within what we know, we, to the, we, within what we today call a single species. Uh, a very good example is long eared bats from the genus Plecotus which are my main uh, research focus in the last years. For example, until the 60s, only one species that was the brown long eared bat Plecotus auritus was um, considered to occur throughout Europe, from Iberia to Russia, and from Sicily to Scandinavia. In the 60s, for, based on morphology and protein uh, differentiation, the, and a second species was um, described that is a gray long eared bat. And today, by the use of molecular tools, we know that this scenario is much more complex. There are several species with hidden within the variation of both brown and gray long eared bats. Don't be tricked by the, these pictures that represent each, each row represent 
represents a different species, they look like they can be distinguished easily from these pictures. But uh, the truth is there is a high variation within the same species, which, which makes most of their morphological traits quite overlapping to each other. So morphological identification can be very tricky for these bats. An example is one of these uh, cryptic complexes is the gray long eared bat. For, uh, as you can see, there are, it's not a, a one single species, but at least five different species occurring in different parts of Europe and North Africa. We now know that both brown and long eared bats are actually cryptic complexes consisting in at least a total of uh, 10 species, but this number is, is likely to, to increase in the next years. And each of these uh, species is actually ecologically distinct. They use different habitats, they occur at different elevations, and so on. So besides they partially have an um, overlapping distribution, they strongly differ in the conservation strategy uh, that needs to be um, conducted for securing their, their long-term conservation. While focusing on bats from Sicily. Uh, Sicily has a long history of zoological uh, studies, but yet most of these do not cover bats. And namely, in the case of uh, long eared bats, the information available is rather poor. As you can see, uh, one of the latest um, references available is the Atlas of Sicilian Vertebrates, dating back to the mid 90s, and only four records of the gray long eared bats were available with no info on exact location uh, about where the bats were found. So, um, definitely uh, an, an interesting research, research and faunistic uh, questions scenario. Uh, as, you, as I told you, there have been recent findings in the distribution of Sicilian bats and particularly on long eared bats. There are at least two new species detected for Sicily. One is the brown long eared bat, Picotus ovitus, first found in 1915 in Neberdi uh, Mountains. And also uh, in, 19, in 2019, I was involved in the discovery of uh, the African uh, long eared bats on Pantelleria Island raising to four to at least three the numbers of long eared bats occurring in Sicily. But still, as you can see from these pictures that are extracted from the maps available from the uh, Italian Mammal Society, who is currently working on the most updated uh, atlas of Italian mammals, uh, knowledge on the distribution of these two species on the the main island of Sicily are still, is still really anecdotal and fragmentary. As you can see, there are only four uh, certain record, records for Plecotus austriacus and just three for Plecotus auritus, two of them namely um, occurring from the Etna mountain, very close to where, are, where you are located now. One of these um, sites, these records coming from the Etna mountain uh, regarding Plecotus auritus um, is very recent since the, uh, it, it comes, the, this record comes from the Grotta dei Briganti which is very close to Catania and long eared bats were known to occur in this cave since at least 2012 but they were morphologically identified as Plecotus austriacus that is the gray long eared bats since this was considered most common species occurring in the area and before uh, 2015 it was uh, the only species actually recorded for the island but uh, since i it, since i stumbled <laughs> upon some pictures i was in doubt that they were actually a plecotus austriacus so i contacted um caving people that is carmelo um to collaborate on this site with we, uh, they sent, um, Carmelo sampled uh, a dead individual and we sent a, a tissue sample for barcoding identification and what we found out was very interesting since uh, this was the first actually detected roost for Plecotus auritus found in Sicily. So it was, uh, there was a mismatch between morphological and 
molecular identification. The site, as you can see, in, uh, is Grotta del Brigante. It's located at about 1500 meters. I will not spend too many words on uh, the site description since there are other presentation on the topic. But the most important part is that bats use um, a huge uh, crevice found in the middle of this lava tube and also all several niches found throughout the roof of the, of the tube. Uh, since uh, my co-authors conducted one year of monthly surveillance and visual sensors to assess the presence and phenology of, the, of this bat colony between 2013 and 2014, we, they found out, we found out a peak of presence between May and June with up to 50 adults, which makes these uh, a very important rule in terms of demography of the species on the island, probably, and also one of the largest and most numerous uh, roosts known for the species. Bats are present throughout summer, and as you can see from video and pictures, there are pregnant and lactating females that have been observed, um, as you can see you know, on the left butt. On the butt on the left, there is a, a, a nipple area right below the, the wing which makes the site a reproductive site, a nursery site. That is a site where the, these bats aggregate to give birth and raise their young, which makes it even more important for their conservation in Sicily. Of course, numbers of bats decrease in autumn and uh, there is no bat at all in winter. That is, the site is not used for hibernation. Also, probably also because the cave and both cave entrances are below snow throughout winter months. Throughout these years of monitoring and surveillance, a few, at least two uh, important conservation pro problems um, occurred for this important colony. The fir first of all, agricultural and, forest and forestry practice practices. Since the site is located in a cultivated area, in apple orchards actually, uh, so that management of the um, agricultural practices that occur in the area may have strong impacts. On, on the bat population, since this bat species mostly feeds on feed on moths and particularly pest moths uh, that are not welcome in orchards usually. But the most important uh, conservation issue is probably wildfires. As you can see from the pictures, huge wildfires occur in the area, also because maybe you've seen in in, um, in the news um, this year was really terrible in terms of high temperatures occurring throughout Italy and particularly in Sicily. And this probably um, provoked direct, both direct mortality, since we found at least three individuals dead in, inside the roost, prob probably because of the fumes, but still we have to assess this. And of course there, is, there, have been, there has been a huge habitat loss around the site, which may um, imply that bats um, may not reproduce, may decrease reproductive success, or even direct, uh, may, may provoke direct mortality now for the absence of food, or in winter if bats do not gain enough fat reserves to, um, to pass through winter. What I'd like to, to tell about, um, to, to tell as take home messages. First of all, uh, from our results, Sicily certainly holds higher bat diversity than we expected and, and than what it was known in the past. But such a diversity is hidden by the difficulties in identifying species within cryptic complexes. For this of the Plecotus bats is just an example. This is, holds true for several other uh, gen bat genera and probably other uh, taxonomical groups, which implies that we have to rely to molecular tools to uh, assess the true diversity of this group in Sicily and elsewhere. But more importantly, I would like to stress how the collaboration between bat experts and caving association is, the, um, is key to foster knowledge on both bat distribution and of course, consequently, to secure both cave and bat conservation. Of course, I, let, I leave you with some references. If you wanna go deeper into the topic, of a cryptic species and long-eared bats in Sicily. And of course, thank you for your attention. I will be glad 
to reply uh, to you if you have any questions about the topic. Thank you. Se passiamo a Vantan, io sto cercando di recuperare. Sì, posso sapere il dottor Seramoto. Quello con le bucle per le mani, accanto a Gemini. Dai, hai l'audio aperto. Uh -huh. uh, Why awesome. Does this uh, session about theology is going to the end? Uh, sorry. This end of biology is going to the end. I would like to ask to Mel Bucolo to go to this place, return to this place, and uh, at the end of this session, uh, on behalf of the Commission on Country Caves, I would like to thank very much the Professor Polly that came here to uh, take the chairman of this session, and we would like to give her a book that was printed this year um, for this symposium and for the exposition that there is in San, San Nicola Arena Church. So I invite the professor to go and uh, uh, it is a pleasure for me to give the book of the uh, exposition. <laughs> The same is for, uh, for you that lost us. Thank you. This is room, mm -hmm. and uh, I invite you also to go. Thank you. Thank you. Now we search to uh, return on the previous program and to connect with Ms. Van Tan, if it is possible. No, 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 If you, if you like uh, spoke with, spoken for the people, can you now? Non ce l'ho. Non ce l'ho. Non ce l'ho. Non 
adesso non andiamo avanti mm. Mi dico che costa là e poi lo facciamo presentare. Dopo il prossimo. E io metto se ne metto. Questo è un altro che c'è. E sparì. Poi c'è anche la sua che è saltata. Non è bene. Questo mi è sparito un'altra volta, il combatto un getto U. Mi è sparito pure il giorno. Hi, Sebi. Yeah. Yeah, hi, è John here. Yeah, look, there's nothing I really need to say now. Um, I'm all good here. Is anyone... Uh, is the Argentina paper happening? Do you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're online. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering if um, the second last paper, the um, the one on um, Argentina, was being presented, or is that um, is that not? Hello. John, go. Can you? Yeah, look, I was just wondering if uh, the paper on uh, the Malag area in Argentina was in the corner in the basaltic caves in Argentina. Um, it was, it's listed on the program as happening before uh, Leonardo's last paper, but um, is it? It's not happening now, is that the story? Hello? Sì, questo va a adesso può essere registrato. È tutto dopo, puoi parlare. Dove inizia questo? Ah, sì, sì. 
Posso leggerlo in... Posso leggerlo? Sì, sì. Si legge. Legge come inizio, quando? Non lo so maniera questo luogo. Questa parete di là. Vai, vai. Che dice? Sì, sì. Eh, Ti puoi presentare. Good morning, Dani, in Buenos Aires. Mi sento di smettere con l'Istanbul. Un punch di scripture of Academia de Bellas Artes de Buenos Aires y eh, eh, Universidad de Salonico de Ser Arte Saloniki and eh, University of, of Bologna. I am collaborator of, of the Ministry of Bienes Culturales eh, of Catania. It's a general archaeology because I discovered one cavern in Contra de Marca in Castiglione de Sicilia. Eh, this for this eh, moment I, I begin reverend uh, my, my relation with the Spanish G across the uh, group in Italiano in the group of Grotte. My, my, I am correspondent uh, of the Federación Argentina de Espeleología, uh, the cual uh, this approach mind I um, I come to present uh, a nice work uh, with uh, Carlos Benedetto and I'm Carlos D'Agostino of the... Uh, I come to read the English letter. <laughs> um, uh, original published in English in uh, letter 77 with Volcanic Games Commission. Astra, the importance of having discovered in the volcanic distance of Ionia the most extensive flowers of white lavas lavas on the yes on the, on the planet is once again heavily high, highlighted which actually they, they have not yet been explored stereotypically. The bibliography was updated and studies imagery that allow that in comes so from them. Uh, this uh, is a word resumed. Ah, capito, sì. How her formation were studied from 3.8 million years to uh, 10,000 uh, years, Pleocene to Pleistocene. The recent discovery of a new family <coughs> of troglobitic arachnids in the lava. Today, the region is very relevant. A chronology of the main scientific study carried of a basaltic area that included three Argentine provinces. Yes, I want to see if this work it really is, is making for one when our scientific. Uh, expert in the uh, biospeleology and uh, collaborated with uh, Dr. Teresa uh, Anaïn D'Agostino, a member of the, of the our group uh, of Federation Argentina Speleology, and this is uh, now in Russia, and continue to work in these times. Keywords, Trogloic Arabids, Biospeleology, Volcanic Caves, Lava Tube, Argentina. And uh, here is a photo of the Arabic new, a new species covered. Yes. And. Uh, okay. 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 <laughs> I, Thank you very much. Excuse me, my English. Yes. Uh, gracias. Grazie. 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 Grazie.
Hi, Mr. Mr. Who? Hello. 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 Are you calling me? Yeah. Yes. No. Mr. Mr. Who is online? You want me to leave? 
Non lo vedo la non lo vedo molto, pure non lo vedo tanto. John, ehi. No. No. Hello, Giuseppe. Yeah. Um, yes, I, I think the line is very bad at the moment there. Oh, okay. Now, this is Mr. Ho trying to speak to you, I think. Mr. Chung. It's... 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 Oh, no. Ben. <laughs> no, è tempo. Ben, is that you? Yeah. Hi, nice to meet you finally. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I remember you. <laughs> Tomorrow afternoon, we will be presenting our proposal. Okay, so with, with two vans. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very confusing for a simple person like me. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, the, the pronunciation is uh, similar. Okay, can you but, tell uh, me? Yes. Tell me exactly how to pronounce. Um, um, I think in English it is uh, pretty much uh, the same, uh -huh. but uh, in, Vietnam, in Vietnamese we do uh, differentiate. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, difficult to uh, explain. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Just so long as um, your. Um, not embarrassed by my very poor pronunciation. No, it's okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, it is uh, understandable and uh, everybody understands that, so no problem. We okay. also pronounce uh, foreigners' names uh, very, in a very strange way, and they also accept. <laughs> Okay, no, that's that's fine, and yeah. um, you, you know we we're very serious within the uh, the commission on the way we we run things in terms of the science and the presentations and so on, yeah. but um, we like to keep things very informal. Yeah. Okay. And unfortunately, uh, you know I think uh, our friends in Catania have done a wonderful job. Yeah. Um, have had some technical difficulties, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, yes. You know, both both at their end and also in receiving. Mm. Um, you know, we had some problems with the connection to Germany yesterday, and also yeah. uh, with the connection through to here in Australia. So, yeah. but we're we're getting by. We're getting by. It's. I've got to say, it's a very poor substitute for being uh, physically present. Yes. Yeah. System, but, yeah. Of you know, course. Of course. course. Yeah. It hasn't proved to be possible, unfortunately. Yeah. And I understand the COVID situation in Vietnam now is um, not very... Yeah, it's quite, quite severe. <laughs> yeah. And in Australia here, particularly in New South Wales, it's, um, it's the worst we've ever had it. But um, it's wow. still, you know, very, very mild uh, compared to what we've seen in some parts of the US, in the UK, yeah. Yeah, and in yeah. some parts of Europe and Asia. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you are uh, doing a very good job over there. Uh, we have been, but I think, um, you know, with the Delta strain, it's uh, it's really testing our resources. And uh, yeah. I think some of our, I'd never criticise our government, of course, but yeah. <laughs> um, I, th I think, um, you know, perhaps they haven't adjusted as quickly as they might to the change situation, yeah. you know, yeah. both the federal and the state level. Mm. And anyway, we're getting by. <laughs> yeah. So, so you are also down there in uh, in Australia, right? You cannot. Yeah, I mean, I'm, in, I'm in Canberra. Yeah, Canberra. Yeah, yeah we've we've, um, you know, I'm currently confined to my suburb, and we're only oh. allowed to go out for essential shopping. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, 
and the ACT, the Australian Capital Territory, is surrounded by New South Wales, where the situation is much worse. Yeah. We've been living in fear for quite some time that what was happening in Sydney would come to Canberra. And yeah. That now it has, but we're only we're having um, about 20 new cases a day, mm. 400,000 people. So that's not too bad. And we've got some people seriously ill in hospital, but no one has yet died this year. So uh, that's pretty good considering. Mm. So uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, we, uh, welcome you um, next year. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope so. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, of course, we'll be looking very closely at um, uh, yeah. your offer tomorrow. Um, mm. But I, I think um, you know it's a very strong proposal, and mm. we'd dearly like to uh, have a conference, a symposium, I should say, yeah. in. Yeah. in Vietnam yeah. and we're also looking at where we might have one two years after that yeah and you'll hear about that tomorrow but we I've had um, two preliminary proposals come in and both oh. of them uh, more work um, yeah. um, but obviously um, it took some time for the Vietnamese proposal to work up for this year but in the end I think it's a very a very good and detailed uh, proposal yeah and i'm hoping we get something similar over the next 12 months okay in, uh, hello 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 yeah. Thank you very much, Mrs. Tran. No, it's Mr. Wu. Wu. Uh, Mr. Wu. It's a uh, uh, collapse. Collapse. Okay, I'm happy. 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 Now, I would like to introduce you, Mr. Giuseppe Priolo. This is the main organizer of this symposium, but he is also a speaker, so he has to speak to us. Here is Mr. Giuseppe Priolo. Okay. Sì, mi devo mandare in auto. <laughs> Good afternoon, Aria. <laughs> Sorry for my English, very <laughs> school level, but uh, I think uh, I spoke to a little Martin Jashing cave on the Etna, called the the Grotta dei Rovi in Piano Cannelli. 
this this cave what this is the geographic this is the geographic situation for the area of exploration and uh, like in Sicily and the Mount Mount Etna in in the south where side of uh, Mount in the land of Pedara town. The location is called Passo Cannelli and is a, a old lava flow in the north area of Tardaria. The cave is located in the badland in the uh, at the north side of the street, in the road, the road. and in this the image, you can you see the input of the cave. But uh, this cave is not much important for the dimension or for your characteristics of rheology and uh, other geomorphology uh, categorized, but have one important evidence. If you illustrate in second time of this uh, presentation, the first uh, step of the, of the cave is uh, a standard lava tube with uh, a, a, a important coverage from any centimeter for the pyroclastic products from sand and small lapilli. And uh, oh, I have, I have a a planimetry a plan with uh, this uh, C uh, reverse C. In the in the, uh, in the, the last in the last year, when the COVID did not uh, <laughs> destroyed you know, the, 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 the hobby of the speleologist. It can it is possible uh, the activity of data collection and uh, the, but the drawing of this uh, data is possible over in the next the last year uh, last month of this year. The cave is very small, I have an extension for 63 meters, but mm, it's not the, your uh, central. Uh, evidence. This is a, a one of uh, picture for the first session for in the in the planimetry. If you see the reference in the in the drawing, and I have uh, many uh, collapsed from the lava block to the roof of the lava tube. Another interesting uh, morphology is a, a, a lava room in a small section, but uh, is in the sudest sudwest uh, part of the, of the uh, lava tube. The most important morphology since for, for my observation for you know, we uh, for the observation for the research team is uh, many small hole in the uh, roof and the floor. But this this uh, cylindrical hole don't have a, a simple uh, explication. In, in this uh, picture, can you see any of all uh, in the, in the, mm -hmm. But if you see the uh, centimeter dimension is a small and not big uh, hole. But it's very interesting with uh, the every hole have a correspondence in the roof, in the floor, and in the roof. Why is this, this uh, morphology? Don't have a, a scientific uh, explanation, but uh, uh, for the observation for the every plant uh, in the area, I see a possible of uh, a 
interpretation of these characters. I, I think uh, is uh, a small system of uh, canon rule, canon uh, lava, lava canon, and uh, is uh, bo born for the uh, end of the genista plan for the flow for the lava flow. Mm -hmm. This interpretation is possible if uh, <laughs> you. Uh, study of the two layer for one of the hole in the cave in the cave and one on the uh, geometric structure of the plants of genista and the, the dimension the geometric disposition of the uh, principal parts of the plant and the hole in the cave is uh, the possibly solution of this uh, mystery. If you see the uh, the hole in the cave, can you compare with the outside situation and have many similitudes for the real interpretation? This is a hypothesis, is not set, but any study for this uh, activity of research is possible for if you, uh, if we can uh, acquire the, a sample in, uh, in the cave for determining the carbonous uh, residues in the world. Is it possible that the analysis, the explication is correct? For uh, your uh, 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 happiness for your enjoy uh, activity see any a picture of the cave two lava rules uh, with, with uh, any part of the cave of the final uh, step of the cave a particularly of one of this uh, hole it, this is a, uh, a ball a ball on the found of the the, the hole. It is another um, question for the, in the next uh, time when uh, it's possible to study. This is the silhouette of the session principal of the cave and uh, I end my presentation uh, for uh, a reimbursement for the people of my group for the collaboration during the exploration, the exploration and Sorry for my elementary English. I thank you very much. I don't know if I am alive. Uh, Roberto, can I ask a question? Oh, I think so. Yeah. Do I understand this correctly that these are imprints of plants, right? Yes, genus uh, But uh, they, they are, I mean, they have the same, I mean, the same holes appear in the ceiling and on the floor. In corresponding places. Yes. So, so I, I didn't quite understand. Uh, uh, so the, but what I see is that there was a uh, blazing on the, on the ceiling that peeled down. Is, is that what the colleagues think also? So that's, that explains the correspondence between ceiling and floor. So the, the a layer of glazing peeled down from the ceiling when it was hot. Uh, uh, the microphone to Yes, Stefan. 
it, yes, it is it's a, the axial projection for the all on the roof and the all on the floor is uh, the possible for the principal structure of the typical plants of the Etna, the genista etnensis. If uh, the the also of part of a professor Polly in your study. <laughs> and this is this is a, a, only for me is the only one uh, explanation for the presence of the for, for the all in uh, the position. If you see the geometrical disposition of the all, can you observe the correspondence for the principal brain for the branch 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 of the plants is my hypothesis but for the geometric disposition is the only one possibility for this morphology Okay. Yes, I'm here. Well, I, I didn't quite understand you. Um, is it? I mean, for me, it looks like you had a lining on which split and fell or rolled to the floor on both sides of the cave. So. These are not the, the, the rollers we have sometimes, which are levees, but this looks as if the whole lining from the ceiling became detached and sort of uh, came down and rolled itself up. Maybe somebody can make a sketch on the board. I, uh, where uh, where it came up uh, this morphology in your study? In a way, where do, you find, where do you can find similar structures? Where? Well, I see it. I see it on your pictures. <laughs> I'm not saying where I'm finding. I'm just interpreting what I saw. Okay. Okay. Well. <laughs> Maybe somebody can make a sketch in the audience who has the same thought. Okay, we would like to know if, if, if during your expositions, there are there areas of such as the why you have found similar forces. Uh, Stefan, uh, I sent you my uh, with mail uh, my picture for this uh, Yeah, and thank you. you. Compare with your uh, picture. Sure. If you send me your, I don't get. Oh, Giuseppe, yeah. I, I, I do I, not have a picture. I'm ah, just interpreting what oh, you are sorry. saying. Thank you now. Okay. I understand. Okay. I don't understand. Okay. I, in, this afternoon, send you the picture. Okay. Well, so, we are right at the end of this session of today's session. And, uh, uh, I would like to tell to people uh, that are a friend of the plants, plant friends, that uh, tomorrow in the afternoon uh, there will be a guided tour of the botanical garden in Catania. That I think it is very important. They told me that it is very important. So if, we, if there are uh, friends of the plant, uh, I suggest to take that trip tomorrow in the afternoon. Uh, uh, to all uh, people connected online, I would like to tell uh, also that uh, uh, there is a, there are two things that you cannot uh, uh, exchange with us: uh, and the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> the granita in Catania, and this is what uh, we are going to do in the next times. So, all people, the meeting is for tomorrow morning at the nine nine thirty in the morning. Good. Thank you very much to be here.
puoi chiudere. Qui c'è una lettera. Di me.